Welcome back to Reynolds Runabouts, everyone. This is Jeffrey Reynolds, and this is episode three of the restoration, at least the partial restoration of the outside of a 1955 wage maker made Wolverine 14 foot ply lap. And what I've discovered, I spent 12 hours on the stripping using total bolt stripper. I did the whole bottom and then the half the transom. Now the experiment is to do the exact uh, same thing on the starboard side using a Wagner uh, heat gun and my scraper from Ace Hardware to see if that speeds it up and to um, look at the cost of not having stripper a time of washing the boat after the stripper has been done so you can clean the surface. And um, I found it to be really easy. That completes the stripping of the transom. Here you can see a comparison side by side. Uh, to my left would be the paint gun or heat gun. To the right would be the total boat stripper with the same ace um, scraper. Pretty similar. Um, twice as fast from what I can tell. So I'm on to now the bottom of the boat and I knew it went up pretty quick when I tested it, so I'm expecting great things. So back to work. I need to show you how fast this Wagner heat gun strips paint. I put it relatively close. You can just see a little bit of a red shadow on the paint. And then the next step, you'll see it bubble. see it down here and then this is going the opposite direction with my ace scraper so it's a, a straight edge just look how it paints peels that paint and what I do is I just keep the gun a little bit ahead of my work and it does the same thing on the planks or the strakes this was really hard to do before um, with, with the stripper and I just Lately, let it ride on that straight, the garbage straight, and I just keep that gun right there where the work is, and it just peels it off like a ribbon. Um, these, like we talked about before, they have different bevels on every one, convex to concave. And with that, this is what I've been doing with those. Again, I go ahead and I heat it. takes about 15 seconds instead of 15 minutes like the, uh, the stripper does. See a little, and then you start to see, it's funny, sometimes you see water boiling and bubbling up so you know that there's a little bit of dampness in this. I just start to bubble. And the beauty of this Wagner heat gun is also it has a fan. So it's blowing uh, the debris away from your work instead of me brushing it all the time. So here I'm just going up and down because of the bevel issues. Look how it just peels that paint right off. That's old 5200 popping out. And I just, look at that, blows it away. You know, and you have to, you have to switch hands once in a while, obviously, because they want to get tired of doing the other thing. But look how that just... And this is all of the paint coming at once, not the three layers that I was taking off each time with four different applications. This is just peeling right off. So I'm gonna get right back to work.
I'm working on the starboard side of the boat where the color was. It was black, but I was pretty sure it wasn't going to be black originally. And here you can really see what's happened. You've got the black, you've got the gray primer. You always use a gray primer under a, a dark color. And then you see a blue and then a white. White is used for brighter colors as a primer. So there's your primer, there's the blue, and then the gray primer and the black, which was done by a later rest restoration. I'm thinking about 2012 from what I could tell from the registration stickers that I took off already. So 1955, uh, Wolverine uh, boats came in with options of a two, two different types of blue, aqua or superior blue. I am not sure what color this is. I do know that in 1955, it's a dead ringer for the Pettit brand bikini blue. Now, what I'll do is I'll share that with the owner and then I'll also uh, do some checking to see what sort of blues that I can get currently, including Pettit, which still sells bikini blue. I'll look at other brands, quality brands of paint for marine applications that have similar looks to this. I do know that I've got a good match with bikini blue from Pettit, so that's nice. I'll do, but I'll do some checking just to say I, I check to make sure we're doing all that. And I will continue to work my way down the boat and um, just keep sanding. Um, using my Orville sander, 80 grit, really carefully working down to the bare wood and then I'll have a really good surface to put my new primer and then whatever color the owner decides she would like. So back to work. I've got the sanding done on the boat, uh, bright spots and color. And in order for me to do this well, I'm going to release the, um, this is the steering block for the steering gear. So I will take the nuts off the backside, pop these out, give me a flat surface to work for it with. And then when I go to put this back, after we have varnish and stain back here, I will put these back and um, then varnish over them like they were here. Um, and probably I'll reseed them with 4200 by 3M. Um, again, it's on the side of the boat, gets water on it. It'll protect the wood and then it'll be protected by the multiple coats of varnish as well. And I have the same issue down on the stern where the pulleys for the stern area are located that then go right to the motor. So I'll take those out as well and finish this top side sanding. And then I'm going to have to uh, remove the splash rail. Um, it's, it's, I can see cracks between it and the hull and dark spots, which means water's gotten through there. So what I'll do is I'll take that off finish sand the top part and then I'll re-bed it and it fastens from the inside of the boat. So I'll re-bed it with 5200 by 3M. That'll give it a good adhesion and it will seal out water from getting in in the future. I will also soak it in Smith's um, uh, epoxy sealer to also give it even more protection as I, as I will with the bottom which will get a barrier coat in addition to that. The bright sides, I typically don't put Smiths on, but you can. So I will probably just use the stain and then the sealer that comes with the Pettit, the captain's varnish, which is more of a yellow. And the goal is to bring this color back, uh, put the, putting the patina back into the wood that I took out to get some of the dings out in the wood itself. And I'll try to match this color with the stain, which then will match the deck and then the interior, which I will be working on as well. The owners decided to go ahead and uh, strip the deck and just do a light sanding on the interior, meaning the seats and dashboard with, uh, again, more coats of uh, Captain's Varnish by Pettit. So that's the plan, and I will get back to work.
So that completes the sanding of the sides um, to the point where I need to take off the splash rail, which will allow me to get in around the curve of the de detail area. Got a little area up by the rub rail that I might also get with a detail sander, or I might release the top sheer rub rail. I see some cracks on ones on the uh, starboard side, and I might have to put a Dutchman in, but I'm thinking I probably will pull it into an epoxy repair because it's not missing wood as much as it's got a crack. So I'm going to do that. So more than likely, not only will I pull the splash rail to rebed it, but also to sand it easier and then put it back with 5200 and fasteners, but also pull the sheer rub rail and go ahead and rebed that as well, possibly with new fasteners, depending on how bad they are when I pull them out and repair the um, cracks if I find them. And of course, be a lot of putty picking, I'll call it, out of those fastener holes, um, at least on the sheer rub rail. The splash rail is fastened from the inside, which will have its own challenges, but um, with the boat lifts that I'm using, I can turn this thing on its literally on a vertical plane and, um, and take them out really easily, except probably up in the bow, which um, I'll have to do a little crawling around. But for that, um, you know, I have to do that. And then I'll go ahead and finish sanding the bottom, which will be very boring, and I'm not going to bore you with that. So um, I'm going to end this video here and uh, move on to some of the off-camera stuff like sanding out the bottom. But uh, I'll be back in a couple weeks. Thank you for subscribing. If you like the video and the series, please hit the like button. And thank you for attending today, and I'll see you in a few weeks.